I'm glad you brought a picture. I have some, but it's not as uh, I couldn't handle the high tech stuff. So well, neither can I. Um, <laughs> the um, the starting place for the Somerset Courthouse is the is the politics that uh, got Somerset County formed. And uh, Somerset County was actually formed in 1809 when it was broken off uh, as the northern part of Kennebec County. And for some reason, they made the town of Norgewalk the county seat. And uh, uh, and I don't know why they did that, but I wasn't, you know, I haven't read up on what why Norgewalk was such a great place in 1809 when they did that. But Abner Coburn corrected that. Um, and uh, so that in 1873, uh, I'm sorry, 18, so on February 15, 1872, uh, the legislature decreed that uh, uh, the county seat would move from Norgewalk to Skowhegan. And, uh, uh, and I, since Abner Coburn was the governor in 1862, I had to figure his fingerprints were all over that because he was a Skowhegan boy and he got things done. And I'm sure, now I haven't read this and um, I don't want the Norwich people to be irritated about Abner Coburn, but I, I can't believe that he didn't have a lot to do with that. And so when the, when the legislature enacted that and changed things in, on February 15, 1872, they said that Skowhegan had to come up with a courthouse within two weeks by March, of 19, March 1st, 19, 1872. And so the town of Skowhegan got things together because they didn't want to foul it up. I think they were probably afraid that if they didn't get the courthouse in place by within two weeks, that was the deal. So they, uh, they got some businesses to move out of Miles Carpenter's place right down the street for a big brick building. And uh, they put the courthouse there. And uh, there's a picture of it in, uh, in this book, uh, uh, Margaret Chase Smith, Skowhegan. And uh, there's just a corner of it showing on, uh, um, but you can see it's the same building, old brick brick building. There's a picture here of, uh, of the snowstorm in Skowhegan. I'll pass this around. Um, but it's, it's right on the corner there. And so, obviously, the people in Norwalk are really irritated by this and because uh, they lost that business. And, and the beauty of the thing was that when they changed the courthouse from Norwalk to Skowhegan, they left the jail and all the jail types over in Norgewalk. So, I mean, this guy Coburn was on the ball, I gotta say that. And so what the Norgewalk people did was what any sensible person does when they're aggrieved. They brought suit. And uh, they brought suit against the town of Skowhegan, and it went to court, and uh, the town of Norgewalk lost. But they did then did what any good lawyer would do, they appealed it to the main Supreme Court, and that actually got decided in the main Supreme Court, and Skowhegan thankfully won. Uh, uh, there was great bitterness about this between the two towns, and in the ensuing elections, the town of people got, the town of Norgewalk got their people elected, uh, but then Abner Coburn again stepped in, and he gave uh, the town of Skowhegan a courthouse, which is the topic of my discussion, the Somerset County Courthouse. And, uh, and it was built in a, over, in a little over a year, and it's what stands there now. And I'm going to pass around pictures of the original courthouse, and right behind it, and I'm going to pass it around in pairs. i got about six pairs, so take a look at them. You can see the courthouse as it was originally built, and then the courthouse when it was remodeled in, in 1904. And uh, the... Uh, You'll be able to see that the, the differences uh, are pretty remarkable. But before I, I leave Abner Coburn, I've got to say that the other thing he did, which was pretty good, was he, he and Philander lived in that nice house. They got their sisters to come in and take care of things. I mean, I, I was impressed. That was pretty good. Uh, in, in, as part of the thank you to Abner Coburn, uh, they, the town of Skowhegan commissioned an artist, Edwin Warren Marble, to uh, make a bust, uh, a big uh, bust of, uh, of Abner Coburn. And, and that is what you see in the Somerset Courthouse. And it's there in a glass frame. Uh, and it's uh, it's still there, and it's an impressive piece of work. I thought we had one here, but do we? 
That's in the geology. Okay, that's well, probably a small model, but um, so I told you that Coburn engineered getting the courthouse here, but thoughtfully left the jail over in Norgewalk. But Norgewalk got back, and the jail was sent over here in 1895, and uh, and it was placed uh, where the old jail uh, is now, what's now the grist mill. And uh, when the old jail was sent over here, Skowhegan immediately built a tunnel under the road so that they could get the prisoners back and forth from the courthouse to the jail. And when the when the, the jail was closed and the gristmill people were buying it, they discovered this tunnel, and it's still there. It's all closed up, but it's there's a tunnel under the road from the gristmill over to the uh, Somerset County Courthouse. Now, shortly, I, I pass around these pictures. Shortly before. Um, the courthouse was re remodeled in 1904. Uh, it had this, you can see there was a big impressive cupola on the top of the courthouse, which I just noticed today is no longer there. Uh, I was looking at these pictures getting ready at the last minute for this, and I, I sort of had in my mind there must be some cupola up there, but I went out this afternoon and I looked, and there's no cupola, there's this huge antenna uh, which is there. But the cupola was actually removed uh, before 1904, they ran out of space, and so they built, they remodeled it, and uh, and that's the difference. Those two pictures. It's now the new part of the uh, cor courthouse that was built in 1904 was added on to the east end down uh, down um, uh, Pleasant uh, uh, High Street towards the light, uh, going easterly, um, and you can see in those pictures they added on uh, to the end of it. And it looks, when you go out there now, which I did this afternoon, it looks just like the original courthouse. It was nicely done and added on, and uh, it's, it's very difficult to tell that they made that addition. Uh, but they did it because they'd run out of space. Uh, then, uh, in, in, uh, the, then, of course, again they ran out of space, and they remodeled again in 1938. And uh, if you look at it, that's the last part of the building that's there now, and it's a hideous little structure with a flat top, and it, it just doesn't, I mean, you can obviously tell it's, a, it's an addition, and, uh, and in that part of the building, they put uh, the registry deeds downstairs uh, where it still is, and in the upstairs of that, they had a, what was a beautiful library, and it, it took up much of the second floor where the Superior Court Clerk's Office is now. And when I came to town in 1974 practicing law, that was one of the best law libraries in the state. It was huge. It had many more volumes than any other county uh, law library, except the ones in Lewiston and the ones in Portland uh, were a little bigger. But this was a magnificent one. And, uh, and the Merrill family, uh, they were judges and lawyers in town, and they had made it just a great library, and it was a pleasure to work there. Um, and uh, of course, in a courthouse that size, ever all these different departments fight for space. And uh, the district attorney always wants more space. The commissioners want more space. And the li the lawyers had so little juice in town that they couldn't stop the library from being. Um, depleted, shrunk, and then moved down to the basement. Uh, and uh, that's where it is now, and you can barely find it. It's a, it's a room. And, and the justification is, of course, with electronics, everybody can go online and get anything you need out of a law library. But it's, it's really too bad that that part of the, uh, the legacy of Somerset County Courthouse uh, was destroyed. The, um, and the, and the reason they built that last edition was there was too much, ironically, there was too much paper. Um, and uh, so they, they enlarged it even more. Um, in, in 1965, the municipal court system, which had been the major court system in the town, was, was replaced by the district court system, which now is in existence. And what they did was they built when you read about this, they, they renovated the courthouse to build nice new district court facilities. Well, I was here in 1974, and what they did was they put it in the basement of the new ugly wing, uh, and it was there for years. Um, 
uh, in the basement of the courthouse. And finally, that got shoved out. And so you may remember it went downtown, and it was on the second floor on Water Street. And then after that, in 1994, it went to the new courthouse right across the street from the old courthouse. Um, in 1975, the county attorney system ended, and they, the Superior Court was made, it was taken over by the state, so the state ran the Superior Court, but it was still in the county building. And even as, to this day, you hear when the district attorney's budget comes up, it's that the district attorney is a state outfit, but he's in a county building, so there's a lot of financial wrangling back and forth about how they pay the county for using the courthouse. Uh, and that still exists. Um, uh, the courthouse uh, not only dumped the library, but they also moved out the district court, and they moved out the communications buildings, and all those places have their own buildings. And, uh, but now the Superior Court is, it's still a beautiful courthouse. If you go in, the courtroom in the Superior Court is a beautiful place. It's a delightful place to try a case. It's where the juries go, and it's a, it's a great building and a great place. And, uh, um, and, and of course, lawyers in Skowhegan have thrived since the, uh, since the bitterness between the town of Norwich and Skowhegan started generating all this litigation. And there's a section in, in uh, uh, Skowhegan on the Kennebec about Skowhegan lawyers, which is very interesting. The very first lawyer listed in that uh, is actually a woman named Ethel Stewart Walton Abbott. And she graduated from my alma mater, Boston University, in 1906. She came to Skowhegan to practice law. And she um, immediately was saddled with the burden of taking care of her ailing parents, which, were, which interrupted her law practice. I don't know what her husband was doing, Mr. Abbott, but um, she had to stop practicing law to take care of her parents. The minute they died, she left for Montana and continued her law practice in, in Montana. It did remind me of, when you read about Sandra Day O'Connor, when she graduated from law school, she couldn't find a job anywhere. But, uh, but Ethel Abbott found a job with Walton and Walton in, in Skowhegan. But I will say, then I, I realized it's Ethel Stewart Walton Abbott. So she, her, parent, her family took her in, and that's probably the explanation for that. So uh, the Somerset County Courthouse is a great place. And uh, now, yeah, I can see right here, the, the addition is the original courthouse stopped here, right along this line. And the last two windows are the 1904 addition. <coughs> and then after that, the flat part is the, uh, is the, uh, the, the part that's existing now with the uh, legislature. So thank you very much. And I don't know who's